First, I want to thank the SGO, in particular Dr. Laurel Rice, for recognizing my research with the Presidential Research Award. I presented research of GOG3007, which was a randomized phase two trial of everolimus and letrozole um, versus hormonal therapy, medroxyprogesterone and tamoxifen for the treatment of women with recurrent endometrial cancer. What we found is that the everolimus and letrozole receiving patients had a high response rate and a long duration of response, particularly favorable when comparing to the results of the hormonal therapy arm. In particular, those women who had no prior chemotherapy or were never treated with chemotherapy in the past had a 53% response rate with a duration of response of 21 months. That was um, very favorable when compared to not only the hormonal treatment arm, but if we do a histor historical comparison versus GOG-209, it was seven months greater than the duration of response seen in GOG-209. So we're excited about the results. Based on our findings, we feel that we need to do the definitive phase three trial comparing mTOR inhibitors with hormonal therapy versus chemotherapy to hopefully come with a game-changing result that will help women with recurrent endometrial cancer live longer and have a more tolerable therapy as opposed to the, chemotoxic, the, the cytotoxic chemotherapy they receive now. More than 60,000 women annually are diagnosed with endometrial cancer in our country. And Alessandra and I study one of the more aggressive variants of uterine cancer, uterine serous carcinoma. And although it's a very rare form of uterine cancer, it disproportionately accounts for about 40% of all uterine cancer deaths in the U.S. So we have a long way to go to improve treatment and survival outcomes for these patients. And we know that the current standard of treatment is hysterectomy followed by uh, usually treatment with chemotherapy, platinum taxane-based chemotherapy, and then for more advanced stage disease, chemotherapy with or without radiation. Um, and we've learned recently that um, uterine serous carcinoma expresses a protein or receptor called HER2 nu, uh, the human epidermal growth factor receptor, and this is also um, is expressed in breast cancers. And monoclonal antibodies have been developed to treat HER2 positive breast cancers, one of them being Herceptin. So we wanted to study in women that had uh, this HER2 gene overexpressed in their tumors, their uterine tumors, whether the addition of this monoclonal antibody, Herceptin or Trastuzumab, um, in addition to the chemotherapy and surgery, um, would be clinically beneficial for these patients. So, um, as Amanda just said, we design a prospective study, a clinical trial, uh, multi-site, 11 academic institutions in the United States, because as Amanda said, this is a rare tumor, so we need multiple sites to be able to enroll as, you know, the, the, the right number of patients to try to evaluate the activity of trastuzuma when combined to chemotherapy. The study was designed of, uh, as a phase two study, prospective randomized study, so um, enrolling stage three and stage four patient as well as recurrent patient with the uterine serous carcinoma, this aggressive variant of endometrial cancer. And we were specifically selecting patient overexpressing the epidermal growth factor type two receptor her to new, either at three plus level by immunochemistry or two plus level by immunochemistry, but confirmed to be gene amplified by fish assay. What we found is that adding trastuzumab to standard chemotherapy may increase the progression-free survival of this patient of about 4.6 months in the entire patient population, and this was highly significant. But also when we look in, uh, this, we have done uh, some sort of subset analysis, looking to the advanced stage disease, so stage three and stage four disease, we found that adding trastuzumab to chemotherapy increased the progression of survival of 8.6 months when compared to chemotherapy alone. It was highly, a highly significant difference. And, uh, and this was done without increasing any toxicity in this patient population.